Excuse me. Uh, I think we're ready to start our next session. Check, check, students. Please come find the seat. Okay, thank you all. Uh, good morning. My name is Corey Anton. I'm welcoming you to our next session of the day. Uh, this is called Mediated Messages. Note here, this is an hour and a half session. We do have five speakers and that lunch will be served immediately after the session. So hopefully we've asked speakers to go about 10 tops, 15 minutes. We will have a little bit of time for discussion and then we're going to do the lunch uh, right here. So please do consult the back of the uh, handout, uh, the, the, pamp, the program, to look at the bios of the different speakers. There's a lot more information about these very interesting people. I'm just going to introduce them in their talks, and we'll let them have the, the floor. So our first speaker is Stephen Makmanovich from the International Bateson Institute, and the title of this talk is The Message, This is Play. Thank you. Oh. I'll put my little clock here so that I know what 15 minutes is. And I just want to thank Lance for inviting me again. It's just such a great pleasure to be here with you guys. Do we have the slide of the fine bottle? So more the climb bottle is coming up. It's coming up in a second. There it is. Uh, so um, the title of this talk is The Message, This is Play, uh, which you will recognize that title from my friend and mentor, Gregory Bateson who wrote about that and taught about it. Um, the talk could also be about flattening and unflattening. Um, I, um, about two years before I met Gregory, I discovered his work. Um, I was an undergraduate at Harvard studying play in baby baboons and baby human beings. And um, I had a teacher then, another wonderful mentor named Jerry Bruner, who was also a Korzybski speaker many years ago. And uh, Jerry very generously uh, gave me carte blanche. I was just a, like an 18 year old kid. And he gave me carte blanche to just hang out in his office when he wasn't there and rifle through his enormous library. So one day I was sitting on the floor at the bottom shelf on the left side, and there was this series of red books uh, called Group Processes, which was uh, transcripts of Macy conferences on, on group processes in living organisms in the early 1950s. And I pulled out this volume and there was the message, this is play, which was about a 100-page transcript of a conference of many, many interesting people led by Gregory. And in, at this time, he invented the concept of metacommunication that, you know, in a sort of simple and cartoonish way, um, a dog comes up to you uh, with his uh, mouth open and his teeth bared, but his tail is also wagging. 
So the tail is classifying the message of the teeth and saying this is play. So, you know, you let the dog nod your hand and you're fooling around and having fun and that's all great. But this was a very, very profound insight because animals can communicate at two or more levels at once and the meta messages that classify other messages, communication about communication, it, com it completely blew away the whole premise of psychology and other so-called behavioral sciences that uh, concern themselves with something called behavior as though living organisms you know, just e emit, you know, to use that guy Skinner's terms, you know, that they emit behavior, they emit strings of behavior, they do this, 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 and that's all there is. And it's not so. We're all communicating constantly with levels and levels of messages. Here we are talking about play in the players club. <laughs> with this format of people giving 15 minute speeches and then sitting down and listening to their colleagues. So that's a game with certain parameters and the game is taking place surrounded by these portraits which are representations of actors who were representing fictional characters who were representing other stuff. So there's layer upon layer upon layer of communication going on. And um, even though Bateson uh, sometimes talked about it in order to communicate about it as, as though it was, he had terms like uh, levels of learning and communication and learning one, you know, there's, there's learning, there's learning to learn, there's learning to learn to learn. Uh, so it seems like it's a stack of hierarchical levels. And he got this from Burton Russell's theory of logical types. But actually, the levels are constantly whittling over, under, around, and through each other. And uh, there is no hierarchy of levels. It's too complex. You know, any any conversation that we have, any incident of play or academic behavior or, you know, whatever, whatever people do, it's so complex with so many layers going. So it's really like the model is really the Klein bottle. I was thinking at one point it was the pretzel, but actually it's the Klein bottle because here's this um, glass blown model of a Klein bottle. And for those of you who know about them, a Klein bottle is a four dimensional structure that's sort of analogous to the, it's the big brother of the Mobius strip. And that place where it twirls around and goes inside itself, it's a one-sided surface with no inside and no outside. So it sort of contains the universe, but it's really the place where it breaks through the wall is actually in the fourth dimension, it's just passing behind, you know, so we're looking at a three, we're looking at a two dimensional model of a three dimensional model of a Klein bottle, which you can't actually hold. Just as here we are with all these kind of pompous looking actors on the wall, you know, it's representations of representations of representations which of course, since there are a lot of people here who are interested in Korzybski, it comes down to Korzybski's most famous statement, which I won't even say because it's already going through your heads right now. <laughs> so, you know, we're concerned with, so, so when you start looking at play, this is play, is somebody fooling with you, as well as the pathologies of communication. You know, Bateson went from 
studying play to developing the idea of the double bind of pathologies of communication that are evident in mental illness, but also evident in propaganda and all kinds of things that we see in the media in um, Donald Trump saying, um, oh, couldn't you tell, I, you know, when he says some hateful racist thing, oh, couldn't you tell I was just joking? Uh, the old Western movies where, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the guys shoot up the town and then they go before the judge and, and the guy says, oh, gee, your honor, you know, me and the boys was just having a little fun. So there's the message this is play, but there's also the misattribution of play. There's the deliberate um, uh, tweaking and lying around. You know, once we understood that animals could communicate on multiple levels and comment on their own communications, we could then, then it's fairly short step to then knowing that it's possible to lie, it's possible to misrepresent, it's possible to deliberately label a communication one way when it's actually another way, and so on. So when we talk about things like behavior, that is flattening the immensely rich activity of human beings and animals and of nature and of the ecology into, you know, trying to put it on one level and put it on a, maybe on a Cartesian graph on the screen or something like that. And when you recognize the multidimensionality of communication, you are unflattening it. And uh, so many of the talks in the past day have been sort of related to this theme of how do we unflatten communication? How do we unflatten education? And that's really what we're concerned with here, you know, because we are um, often impacted by forces that we have. Uh, so Corey raises his wonderful five fingers and soon they'll become four and soon they'll become three. So that's a meta message. <laughs> the fingers grasping over the communication. So one of the great flattening um, episodes in history, just to give you one story, is the second commandment. Okay, so you uh, perhaps remember the second commandment, which says, thou shalt not make graven images. Okay. And this is, you know, the, the people who developed this idea were um, struggling against idolatry and they were trying to establish the idea of God or goddess or whoever it may be as an abstract, large, uh, unholdable, unclassifiable, and I'm not even going to use a noun to complete those adjectives because you can't. Okay. And so what they were operating against was idolatry, which is the idea that, okay, here's the statue, and the statue is God, or the God is in the statue. So what they were really saying is the statue isn't God, the God isn't in the statue. They were saying the same thing that... Um, the Tao Te Ching says in its first line, the Tao that can be talked about is not the Tao. And this is a very profound statement, but it then got flattened into being taken literally to mean not that the, stat the statue is in God, but thou shalt not make statues, thou shalt not be sculptors. And for centuries, there were no Jewish and Arab sculptors. And for centuries in Arab art, uh, the, uh, of course, the, the, the absence of the, the human figure, the human face was not able to be portrayed for many centuries in Arab art. And there's this wonderful novel by Orhan Pamuk called Red, uh, which is about how that sort of broke through in Turkey and the 
late Middle Ages, but um, being uh, not permitted to draw the human face, they then had this extraordinary efflorescence of illuminated letters and alphabets and abstract symbols and mandalas and all this stuff. And operating under the flattening idea that thou shalt not be sculptors. And then, of course, being artists, having the human spirit, they figure out ways, as they have in all times, to wiggle out from under those restrictions and make something interesting. Because art is play. This is play. What we're doing here, engaging in these games with each other, is play, surrounded by all these players in the club of players. And we find ways to unflatten our world. And thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank <laughs> you.